All right, so my handout further goes on to say here about the new way, the long tail. So we were using generic keywords. Now what we're going to do is we're going to search again. We're going to, in a clean search engine, search for a long tail keyword. So now we're going to go in and write comic book shops in Mission Valley or, you know, comic book shops specializing in in, in children's comics. You know, I'm going to be more specific when I search. But notice where I write clean in a clean search engine. So the footnote down here, a clean search engine is one where you have reset your web browser. I recommend cleaning out all the cookies and browsing history before using the search engine. This will give you more accurate results. I recommend having a web browser just for these types of searches. If your main browser is Chrome, for example, use Firefox for when you need to search. Each browser is different. You'll have to find out how yours can be reset. This is important to get results like how your potential visitors would. So people come to my class all the time and they say, I think I'm doing the long tail keywords uh, strategy correctly. And when I search on my, at, at home, I, get, I appear on the first page. But then when my friend does it or I check on someone else's computer, I don't appear on page one. What's going on? Well, the search engines are software that helps us browse. I'm sorry, the web browsers are software that help us browse the web. I might visit a certain website all the time. I might visit a bank all the time. I might do something over and over. I might put in a password over and over. I might type in terms over and over. So the search engines, most modern search engines now, I'm sorry, most modern web browsers now, have all of these like helpful features that in our case might actually get in our way. It's going to remember my history of searching. It's going to remember the breadcrumbs that I left while I went online. It's going to remember this and that to help me, and usually it's helpful. But not when I'm trying to do SEO because it's going to skew my results. When I'm logged into my Yahoo, when I'm logged into my Gmail, I'm logged into Google, and it's keeping track of all my searches. And that might sound scary or it might sound very useful to you. If I'm in, logged into my Hotmail, Hotmail is owned by Microsoft, Bing is owned by Microsoft, Gmail <coughs> is owned by Google, Google Search is owned by Google. So when I'm logged into any of those accounts, it's keeping track of me in various ways that I may or may not know or want them to. So therefore, if you want to get the most effective results, we need a clean search engine. One way, and I'm not going to get to it in this class, you need to figure it out because I don't know your favorite search engine, you need to go to the settings or the options or whatever of your search engine, I mean of your web browser, your web browser, and find out how to delete the cookies, how to clear the cache, you know, how to reset it, how to use it like a clean new web browser. That'll be the result that is most accurate as if someone were searching for you or your keywords. Now there's a big downside. If I tell it to clean out all my cookies and passwords and everything and history, then I don't have my login saved anymore for my bank. And if I never remember my login password for my bank because I click remember me and I don't remember my own password, I'm going to have a hard time getting back into all my accounts when I clean out the browser. That's why I'm saying in the notes here, if you're always using Firefox, download for free Chrome or Opera or Safari and use that and learn how to clean that one out. <laughs> Learn how to clean up that web browser so that it doesn't erase all your cookies and your history that you care about. They're free. You can go to firefox.com, safari.com, opera.com, chrome.com, whatever. You can go download these for free and set them up so they, uh, you don't forget your stuff. Now, there is also on modern web browsers nowadays, it's either called something like new private window, or it may be called incognito mode. It has names similar to that. That's another level of privacy 
in that it doesn't save your, your history while you're browsing, and therefore that could be useful. The problem is, if you've been using your browser for months, and then go to private mode, there's still all that history behind you that doesn't really go away in private mode. Private mode stops tracking you when you go private. So to be the safest, use a browser that you don't use normally. So let's say I'm, I'm using Safari all the time. So I'll switch to Internet Explorer. Then learn how to clean it out and learn how to put it in private mode. That'll be the most clean browser because this second kind of search is built on top of that. Having a clean browser, doing the long tail keywords, and then checking the competition. So that's the new way, and that's an extra step for you to do. When we do this for a company, we, we do it, we, we gather you know 10 results, we do it in Bing and Google, we do it in a clean browser in different computers, different locations, and we try to get the most accurate results for the client. For yourself, you might not want to go that far, but I'm saying here, check out the results of three competitors in Google and Bing, do it with generic keywords, do it with the long tail keywords in a clean engine, in a clean browser, that is. And then we compile the list and when we, when we talk about it next time, compiling that list, what do we do with it? We'll, we'll talk about that next time. But by researching your competition, you are seeing what has worked for them. You are defining what sets you apart and what you have to offer in contrast to your competition. You will use your long tail keywords throughout your site, in posts and page, for example. But you will also create content that fits the overall theme of your site. You will become an authority in the field you're targeting. You will refer, you will create content on a regular basis, and you will spread this content through the internet. So that's very dense here. Let me break it down. I'm saying rely on long tail keyword strategy. Use them throughout your site smartly not keyword stuffing and again that'll make more sense as we talk about it more what is smartly um, we'll talk about it more <laughs> smartly like blogs social media newsletters and all of that marketing stuff that we saw in the blog post, the content that you're creating. By creating content on a regular basis, you'll become an authority. Regular basis. That's, for example, tweeting, or let's just say generically, using social media at least once per week. At least once per week you're going to tweet something. At least once per week you're going to post something on Facebook. Once per week, Instagram, etc. That's basic. If you look at every other big company that gets lots of traffic, they've tweeted 10 times in one day. They've posted two things on Facebook. They've been active a lot. If another way to be active on a regular basis, blog. 100 words once per month. Beginner. Better is going to be 500 words every two weeks. That's a lot of content, a lot of effort, but a lot of content for the search engines to find. So these long tail keywords, blogs, for example, what are chapulines? That was a long tail keyword. We made a blog out of it. We posted it on Twitter and Facebook, and it's bringing traffic to the site. And then, okay, great, traffic to the site. Who cares? All of this stuff, you really have to ask, who cares about those tweets? Who cares about the traffic? You literally have to ask, who cares? Because then what <coughs> is the result that you're going for? What is your ultimate conversion? 
what is your ultimate conversion? And I know that sounds like something out of Pokemon, but what that means is that what are you trying to convert people to, or what result, what goal are you trying to complete? Because keywords or buzzwords that we have in this world are impressions versus conversions. Impressions are simply that your tweet was visible by a lot of people. Your result on page one, number one, was visible by a lot of people. That's an impression. People saw it. They were impressed by it. People saw it. But when they actually clicked, that's a conversion. They clicked on your tweet to read your 200 blog post, 200 word blog post. They clicked on that results page on Bing of your portfolio to view your portfolio. What did they actually do? They clicked, they subscribed, they listened to your podcast, they watched your video. Anything's a conversion. Any goal. Conversion. What's your ultimate conversion? Honestly, I'm trying to sell cupcakes. I've got Victor's Bakery, I'm trying to sell cupcakes and cookies and baked goods. I'm trying to sell something and that's a perfectly good ultimate conversion. You're in a business. I'm trying to sell my paintings. I'm trying to gain donations from my nonprofit organization. I'm trying to do a grassroots political organization for stay-at-home moms. Whatever you're trying to do is your ultimate conversion, your ultimate goal. And that's what all of this is for. What's that tweet for? To try to get you more donations. What's that blog post? To try to get you that call to get that sale. What's that newsletter people subscribed for? For people to use that coupon to buy that product. Again, whatever you're trying to do online, you have to decide what your ultimate conversion is. And so when people read that article on that website about crickets, and they do get interested, and maybe they miss home, their indigenously uh, Mexican uh, food, um, and someone's visiting San Diego, and, they, and, they're, and they're homesick for it, and they see that this restaurant sells it, I'm going to the restaurant and have some. They made that ultimate conversion. They actually sold the dish. So all of this SEO, all of this social media, all of this website in, is, is in, perp is in, is in uh, service to your ultimate conversion. I mentioned in the book, which is optional, go check out chapter one where it talks about quality content. I'll give us a brief excerpt of it next time, but it's more ideas for content creation. What can you create? that people can search for, can find, can share to get you more traffic. All of SEO is about increasing your traffic. If you never heard of SEO, it still existed before the web. How did you ever try a restaurant in the old days without the internet? Maybe you walked by it and walked in. Maybe you had a word of mouth thumbs up review from friends or family. Maybe you saw it on the radio or heard it on the radio, saw it on TV, or a billboard, or the newspaper, all of that is old-school social media. It's just, you know, in the real world, instead of on the on a screen or on a little mobile device. It's all marketing. It's just evolved digitally, and it's taken a new name. SEO, SEM, content marketing. It's just a way to get traffic to your endeavors. So this one, I'm not going to do it, but you should have the idea of what you need to do. You need to search the long tail keyword in a clean search engine. You need to figure out how do I clean the cookies of my web browser and such, because um, everyone's a little different. You may love using Firefox. You need to look it up. Guess what? You can, you can look up right here, ing.com, how to reset Firefox. You're going to see the answers right there. So. If I don't tell you, you can easily look it up. And this is our activity for the first day. And this is not homework. You don't need to turn it in. I can look at your results and give you opinions and such. But this is a competitor analysis that helps build keywords. And then when we come back next time, we're going to set up our webmaster tools, talk about applying the keywords, strategies for backlinks, 
That's another big idea in SEO. And then the class is over before you know it. So take the four week one. You gen they're all they're all good. I'm just mentioning Firefox because that's the first one I clicked, but I use them all on and off. I uh, used Internet Explorer for a long time. When Chrome came out, I used it, but I'm kind of tired of it now because it's so slow. To me, at least, I'm on Firefox again, and I jump over to Chrome. I like Safari, but not on Windows because, honestly, they've abandoned it. Apple has stopped updating Safari on Windows, so it's actually a security liability. So I would say don't use Safari on Windows. On the Mac, of course, it's up-to-date and great, but on Windows, be careful. So what do you think about I like it. I've used it since the 90s. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's a cool browser. It was actually one of it's kind of tragic, but for, uh, Opera was one of the browsers that thought of so many great ideas, and everyone else stole it, and no one gives them credit. But Opera was the first one to do tabs and that quick uh, and the quick uh, the quick menu. What's that? And the mobile browser was real good also, and then it's, they, they invented uh, so much of the great stuff of modern browsers, but uh, they don't have a lot of market share. And I like them. I use them. And then I also use one right here because I'm a hipster. You haven't heard of this one yet. It's called Vivaldi.com. Vivaldi oh, you're a hipster too? <laughs> Vivaldi.com. You don't know about this browser, but... Um, Vivaldi.com is actually sort of like uh, Opera Junior in that some of the people that worked on Opera in the beginning broke away from Opera and made their own version, Vivaldi. Get it? And so this is like the, uh, an offshoot of Opera, another web browser that to, to use. And the purpose of all the web browsers is to browse the web. But maybe get Vivaldi uh, as a way for you to do these searches and then clean out the cookies and it doesn't matter because then you're using your re you're using Firefox or Safari or whatever Chrome as your main browser. And they're all free of course. Back in the 90s Opera was not free. It was like $20 paying for a web browser. That is so 90s. <laughs> Netscape Navigator, remember that one? You can still download it and use it, but it's pretty outdated. So any, uh, any general questions on the many things we talked about today? I'm going to make my notes available in the network folder in a moment. And the videos are available, of course. But any general questions? Yes? I just was curious about the topics that aren't being covered since it's um, What are we not covering? Um, I have to look it up. The big important things, of course, the webmaster tools we are, and keywords, and, and all of that. I think we spent more time on content creation and social media. We don't have time for it, so we have a social media class. Um, so, off the top of my head, I don't remember what we don't cover, but again, send me an email and I might uh, pull up what, what, what is missing. The social media class will cover some Yes, definitely. Any other general questions? <laughs> Come back to the class, that's how they keep me employed. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to end the main lecture at this point. Um, if you would like, you can stay for the last 30 minutes or so for lab time if you need some one-on-one -on -one help. Or what I'd like to do is, if you would like to volunteer, if anyone would like to volunteer their website, I'll put it up on the board here and in the meanest, most um, direct way and helpful way, I will critique your site and give you some advice about what may or may not work and maybe we'll talk about it together a bit too. If you do stay though, I do ask to either pay attention or to uh, to keep it down a bit. Yes? Um, so what if it's not my site that I, I work on for a friend? Sure. That Let's one. check it out. Okay. It's um, realtransformation.com Up on the title, this tab, this is what the search engine also sees first. And I'm seeing the name of your company, which is important, of course, but I don't know what you do based on that name. You do say later here, 
soul activation, the art and nature of human being. Okay, still a little vaguer than I would like it to be, but what you do is second than the name of your company. It's better to have what you do first, because the search engine will find that and display it first. Here it's cutting it off, and I don't know what you do. And that might also get cut off when people search and it comes up on Bing or on Google. So put your tagline, your slogan first, so that that appears first and helps you get traffic that way. Okay, so this is a WordPress site. So mm. how do, and so it's creating the titles for the pages, right? Yeah, but you can edit all of that. Um, that's one of the things we're going to kind of miss a little bit to go into some of the exact details. Okay. So, yes, um, you should look into it a bit. Um, I'm not saying to change it here. I'm saying to change it up on the title. Uh, up on that title up there, because that's what the search engines are going to take and display on the results, not necessarily that. So here I would keep it like that, definitely. Your title is more prominent. I'm talking, it's the same word, so that's why it's confusing. Yes, this is the title of your page, but the technical title code is up on the, up on the tab. The overall design is nice because it's a WordPress site and you can create nice looking sites very quickly in WordPress. So again, if you've got a website already in something like um, something like uh, Wix or Joomla or Dreamweaver or whatever, and it works for you, that's fine. You don't have to switch to WordPress. But if you're about to start a website, I recommend WordPress. My company, we've, we've seen it all. We've seen it making websites in pure code, then we've seen Dreamweaver, then we've seen WordPress, we've seen the newer kids on the block. It's always evolving. Whatever works for you, works for you. But I'm recommending WordPress. Uh, in that vein, the design is good, but what's up with that logo? What? He doesn't have a logo. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I would try then to choose a more interesting font. Arial or a sans serif font like that is not that interesting. You're gonna, your branding is lost. Okay. Does that company have any other kind of branding in like brochures or supplements or anything? Nothing. So perfect, perfect time to craft that. It could be okay, just a. Interesting font. Yeah, that could be the logo. An interesting font right. is is a logo. I like that you've got the social media content at the top if if it's also active. So go check out the YouTube, go check out the Twitter, go check out the Facebook. Good. This icon right here of RSS, it's very passe nowadays. RSS is not as popular as it used to be. How many of you know what RSS is? There you go. It's passe. RSS is like uh, old websites we're 1.0, web 1.0. Modern websites like this is web 2.0. And in the middle is web 1.5, which is RSS, which is that you would get a feed. You would subscribe to the site. When something new was published, it would go to your inbox. What is podcast like now? It's like, but uh, yeah, podcasts are the more modern version of it, definitely. But nowadays, people are on Twitter all day long. People are on Facebook all day long. Pinterest, YouTube, whatever. So you don't quite need to really promote the RSS because it's very passe. So much so that Google themselves, they used to have a great software, Google Reader, I think it was called, mm -hmm. and people would use Google Reader and love it, and Google eventually said, eh, never mind, and they turned it off. So people were anguished and then moved on because mm -hmm. it's not as va valuable as it used to be. So don't worry too much about RSS. I like that you've got your most important stuff up here. Is this like a one-on-one -on -one consultations, or is it like yeah, a... Yeah, he did much, mostly counseling. Yes, um, he's re, um, writing some small retreats, but mostly it's a personal coaching business. It might be valuable to put some form of contact information right above the fold, phone number, or some contact. I know you do have the contact button there, but it gets lost in the navigation here, so what about some other way to make another graphic that says contact 
or a phone number to get in contact. And besides that, yeah, it's, it's looking good. I would kind of be more consistent with spelling because you, you here it's capitalized Zen, but it's not capitalized Carl Jung, and it's not capitalized Joseph Campbell. So just be consistent with, with that design. The search engines look at all of that, the design of your site, the usability of your site. Good headshot right there to connect it with a person. What do you think about putting like contact information there in the widget section? It's it's good that it's on the home page, but you're gonna see that the more obvious the contact information is, the better. So right. if you see it early on, it's right. it's better. Subscribe, enter your email address to subscribe to this blog and receive notifications of posts by email. Okay, close. Uh, what kind of content are you going to receive? What kind of notifications? What life-changing things are you going to get from the newsletter? And I mentioned them in this and other classes, but love them or hate them, Apple is one of the best companies to pay attention to when it comes to marketing. Some people say that Apple's all marketing and no, you know, it's all hype and no substance. But they are one of the most profitable valuable companies in humanity. They've sold millions and billions of dollars of product and a lot of it has to do with marketing about their commercials, about how they're showing happy families and uh, people at the park and hipsters and all of that and they are putting people on the forefront of their advertising usually to sell you their product. Samsung does it to some degree. All companies put people in front of the product so look at these big companies and how do they market themselves and all of their terminology and such. Last time I checked, we're a little bit past 2015, okay. so you might want to change that. But overall, it's, it's really well on the right track. Anyone have any questions or comments or opinions on, on the site? Yes and no. The software itself is free but you still have to buy your .com and we'll talk about that in detail later and that can range from really cheap to like five dollars a year to three hundred dollars a year really huge range on average you're gonna be spending about eighty dollars a year so eighty dollars a year to have your little piece of the internet not a big investment the software though WordPress software that's free Right, anyone else uh, that we'd like to maybe show off your your site a little bit? I'm going to put your notes into the drive. Yeah, let me do that right now. Uh, let me just put my notes in the drive really fast and then we'll do your site. Uh, <coughs> notes, okay. Um, what's your site? I have a sure. About, um, you know, like the, you heard like Dr. Travis, like the SEO, like I guess search. Yes. Like, I don't know, like, you know, like, the search, the SEO, search, mm -hmm. like those types of things. So we can supply these to those methods and it'll help us or assist or. So you're saying that this, so you're saying if you're on your site and your site has search? Or did I'm I not? I'm talking about like for using like traffic tips, for example, like a traffic like I am not familiar with that exact thing. Is it like a directory site or? It's a, um, a search engine optimization hmm. Well, that's the thing that many websites out there, many many companies out there that is provide their version. Mm -hmm of all of this. We can either learn it ourselves and do it ourselves, which is the long way, the hard way, or we can hire a company or we can use a software like that. They all have a value. Um, I haven't particularly used that one because I usually concern myself with all the most like open and free aspect of things, which is the harder way, but I find it more valuable. Yeah, but yeah I would say just more informative because you know, for me, why I'm here is because every time I like Googled or even looked at things online and just to learn about SEO, it's like, it's so vague. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, I'm trying to give as much valuable information as possible in this class, and someone else is going to give a version of it, 
maybe more specifically, maybe more vague, maybe not for free. So if you feel you're getting the results that you're looking for out of that, then it's good. If you feel that you're not, then you might want to supplement it with other things or change it. Anyone else uh, maybe with a website that we can look at? Okay, well, if you're just starting off in all of this, hopefully this information is going to give you a head start. Check out those two books. I'll mention a couple of excerpts from them next time. Next time, if you look at the syllabus, I have there that what we're going to do is we're going to set up the webmaster tools because let's say we had the time to go into detail about blogging and search engines, I mean, um, and social media and such. We want to know, are we being effective? Is it working? Is all the time that I'm spending on Twitter worth it? Well, when we set up the webmaster tools, it will tell us that. It'll tell us those conversions. It'll tell us where our traffic is coming from, how long someone spent on our site, what the most popular pages on our site were, what the keywords that people were using that I didn't even think of. We need to set that up next week. We're going to create a free account at Bing and Google. And for it to work the best, we need to connect that with our website. And that requires that we log into our website. So if you've got a website, bring your login information for it to actually do it. If you're not comfortable doing it in our public labs, just follow along. You can do it at home. And then we will be able to do these extra things, such as checking back links, submit sitemap, and then content creation recommendations. That's next week. So we'll do a little lab time until 4. We do have to end at 4 because I need to be traffic back down to Chula Vista. Good luck. And um, we'll come back again. This video is all recorded and it's going to be up online. Send me a video. I'll send you the link as soon as I can. Thank you for coming.